Welcome to Italian Innovators. I'm Luca Cottini, and today I'm in the company of Marina Puricelli, Senior Professor at SDA, Scuola Direzione Aziendale, a School of Management, uh, at Bocconi University, and author of numerous essays and books on Italy's industrial system. In her research and her consulting activity, she focuses on successful dynamics in family businesses, generational change, and management development. She is also the creator of an important blog, Il Meglio del Piccolo, The Best of Small, based on her book, The Best of Small, Italy of PMI, which stands for Piccole e Medie Imprese, an original model of development for the country, which proposes case studies and reflections on the small to mid-sized structure of Italian companies. Welcome to the show, Marina, and thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you very much for your invitation. I'm really glad to share my ideas and my knowledge on your uh, Italian Innovators uh, channel. Thank you. So today we'll talk about the unique character of the Italian industrial system and we'll trace a profile of the Italian way to entrepreneurship. We'll explore the competitive advantages of the small and good model, the relationship between academia and innovation and academic models of creative thinking. I want to start with a general question. And the, the question comes out naturally, is there an Italian way to industry and what are its features? And what makes the small and medium-sized company model successful on the international scene? Yes, I think that there is uh, an Italian way of doing business uh, and uh, it's a way of doing business that I like to call uh, an original model of economic development. Uh, Original because uh, I think it's something unique uh, within the international context uh, and uh, model because uh, it is widespread from uh, uh, the north to the south part uh, of, uh, of Italy. This uh, original model is based on four characteristics. The first one is small size. You have to know that uh, uh, in Italy, we have more than 90% of companies that have less than 10 employees. So we are definitely a, a country based on small size. The second trait is entrepreneurial organization. In Italy, uh, we have more entrepreneurs than executives or managers. And uh, there is a huge difference between uh, entrepreneur and executive. I always use a metaphor, uh, the entrepreneur is more like the captain of the ship, uh, while uh, the manager is more a lieutenant that uh, help the entrepreneur in uh, implement the strategy. The entrepreneur should have the vision, the strategy in his mind, while managers have to implement. The third trait is family ownership. The large majority of Italian companies are a family business. We have only around 500 public companies, nothing compared to Wall Street, Milano Stock Exchange, is really, really uh, small comparing to Wall Street. Uh, the last trait uh, is uh, that uh, our companies uh, has got uh, a strong capability uh, in manufacturing, a strong uh, vocation for manufacturing and craftsmanship. Uh, since the Renaissance uh, till now, uh, we are obsessed by beauty and by uh, perfection in manufacturing. Sour fare is uh, in our blood, uh, in another sense. And the majority of Italian small business uh, operates in very, very traditional industry, uh, such as food, uh, uh, fashion, uh, uh, furniture, or mechanical components. These four traits, uh, small size, uh, entrepreneurial organization, uh, family business and uh, traditional industry are something that is, uh, as I told you before, unique within the international context 
And uh, so I think that this four trade should be recognized and should be used as an element of competitive advantage when Italian firms have to deal with foreigner markets. Absolutely. And this is really well defining the positioning of Italian uh, industry in the world, which is kind of normally in this premium long term niche uh, with uh, artisanship and this kind of family run entrepreneurship. Uh, this model has always been observed from an Anglo-Saxon perspective as somewhat imperfect uh, in the sense that it's not fully industrialized. It's a sort of intermediate way in between the traditional skills and technologically advanced uh, production. But this so-called imperfect modernity is actually the point of distinction. Uh, It's not a flaw, but it's actually what makes the system uh, competitive. Now, I want to go back to one of the points that you raised, which is really the profile of the Italian entrepreneur that uh, you define. Can you trace a profile of, of, of an Italian entrepreneur and what are his or her defining or recurring characteristics? And if applicable, can, can you tell us something about the different approaches of an Anglo-Saxon manager or CEO and this kind of Italian way to entrepreneurship? Italian entrepreneur is uh, a visionary, uh, a bit self-centered, I can say, and also a bit individualistic. Uh, They have to be uh, visionaries because uh, they have to be like magician. They have to predict the future and also they have to be able to dissolve ties of bureaucracy that in Italy uh, is a problem, is a real problem. They have to have a lot of determination to try to uh, overcome bureaucracy. You have to imagine that uh, our political and administrative systems uh, doesn't uh, incentive them in doing their business. So um, vision and determination uh, have to be two aspects uh, that uh, really characterize uh, an Italian entrepreneur. As uh, I have said before, uh, Italian entrepreneurs are often full owners of their company. And so uh, the business uh, in, is run directly by their family and uh, they have the possibility to clearly introduce a long-term perspective uh, more than a short-term view. Um, The the business, the company is uh, like uh, their own creature, their son, their daughter, and uh, they wish it would last uh, uh, forever. They stay in their own company for the entire life. Anglo-Saxon managers often work for public companies and uh, um, they are not usually owners of their company so that uh, they uh, for sure have a more short-term orientation with a lot of pressure on uh, immediate returns. They are also very often uh, incentivized uh, by short-term objective and also their career is determined by uh, continuously changing from a company to the next. Their perspective is completely different from the one of the uh, Italian entrepreneurs. They often work uh, in large companies in which they cannot have a personal relation with all their subordinates. In a small company, in a small Italian company, the entrepreneurs knows personally each employees and also the relation between the entrepreneurs and the employees is completely different than the one that you can find often in a large uh, international and professional organization. So the long-term vision of a company uh, is developed uh, against the backdrop of the short-term vision of uh, the political system, which is very frail. Italy has a, an average of one government every year, year and a half. Uh, so this uh, relates to kind of a short-term uh, policies, and this explains kind of the difficulty in, in operating with a long-term vision. But also, uh, going back to what we were saying, difficulty not as an obstacle, but really as a resource, uh, is, is a limit that forces to 
uh, think of new solutions. And uh, you talked about the Renaissance. Uh, we're used to thinking about the Renaissance as a period of arts and statics and um, flourishing of culture, but the Renaissance was actually uh, a century of wars. So the 16th century was pretty much like a century of continuous wars. So in this sense, the ability to be an entrepreneur as a way to bypass the difficulty to find new solutions to to the difficulty. And this, again, is a source of competitive advantage, paradoxically. I want to deepen this this conversation at at the level of the human factor. You talked about the profile of the entrepreneur as a profoundly human figure, uh, not as a technician. Uh, The human factor is also determining in the success of of a company, not just from the perspective of an entrepreneur, but also um, from the perspective of the skills uh, of, of the workers. Why in our ongoing digital revolution, the human-centered approach is still a winning one for Italian companies. Well, Luca, I'm probably a bit biased in giving you this answer because, you know, my interest is organization and people management, so I cannot be completely objective. But uh, nonetheless, uh, mm, I think that uh, for a small company, for an Italian small company, uh, strategy is uh, crucial. A strategy uh, is the most important thing, so is the starting point. Uh, if you, as an entrepreneur, uh, if you are able to define uh, the right product, uh, to penetrate in the right market with the right technology, um, it's uh, it's the first uh, uh, important things to do to reach uh, the uh, maximization of profit uh, uh, in the long term. But uh, but uh, uh, if you have the right uh, business idea, the right strategy, and Italian entrepreneurs uh, uh, have a lot of intuition. Uh, uh, regarding uh, the, the strategy. If you are uh, um, a good entrepreneur, but then uh, you are not able to organize properly your business, unfortunately, you cannot reach uh, your uh, purpose uh, in the long term. So I can say that uh, uh, strategy is crucial, but organization is essential. It is essential to be successful uh, in a business, especially if you have uh, a a small size. I think that uh, technology is just a means that can help uh, entrepreneurs in in better succeed uh, in their goals. Uh, The model of Italian companies, uh, in my opinion, is uh, well represented by an oxymoron. I will say artisanally industrialized. Uh, that means that uh, you can be an amazing artisan and be able to, to use industrial 4.0 technology or digital tech uh, just to better fulfill your purpose, just to maximize the profit. Uh, but uh, your skills, uh, your ability are still uh, manual and they still come first. Absolutely. The two things go together. Uh, The ability to implement kind of processes that are structured and well thought of and well managed with the Italian social ability. We grow up in a very social environment and this gives an ability to read human dynamics, I think, in a a more subtle but also profound uh, way, less determined by processes or standard uh, strategies, but more determined on the creation of a network and of real relationships. And actually, this is one of the things that um, students notice a lot. Uh, American students uh, going uh, to Italy, for example, doing internships, uh, they are fascinated by the lunch break, which is an hour, an hour and a half. And uh, the lunch break is really the place where uh, a bond is formed between uh, the workers, a common story, a common strategy is developed in, uh, in an informal way. Now, uh, I want to go back to this 
a synthesis of human element and managerial element that are not uh, opposing to each other. They complement each other uh, because it seems like the formula to innovation is a balance between them. But I also wanted to figure out how this word innovation, which we often use, uh, might acquire different meanings uh, depending on whether it's seen from the academia or from the perspective of, of industry. What is innovation like from your academic perspective and what is innovation like from the perspective of the entrepreneurs you work with and and is there an Italian way to innovation? Yes, Luca, uh, innovation is very different uh, if you you see this phenomenon from academia or from uh, the industry perspective. Uh, I think that uh, innovation from academia is something uh, uh, disruptive, uh, often linked with a strong jump uh, in technologies. While uh, if I think uh, on uh, the perspective uh, of industry, I can see a more uh, incremental phenomenon. Innovation is incremental. You can have uh, uh, innovation uh, from uh, the first phase of the industrial production process uh, from, for example, supply chain or purchasing till uh, the end of the industrial process uh, in uh, within uh, the marketing function or the sales function. I mean, uh, uh, innovation is not only within uh, research and development uh, activities. And uh, if I think uh, uh, about the innovation process within Italian small business, uh, often they um, are able to make uh, very small uh, improvement uh, with very small innovation that uh, nobody nobody has seen before. Uh, Like, you know, for example, uh, espresso machine, uh, simple innovation that can change a lot and that uh, can uh, uh, allow companies to create a strong competitive advantage, even if they are not disruptive innovation. Uh, In your blog, Il Meglio del Piccolo, the best, of small, you really engage with a different style of content presentation, which is different from the traditional academic delivery. How does this industrial storytelling that you enact and lateral thinking really enhance your work as an academic? Uh, Very interesting question, Luca. Uh, Well, I started uh, to write case studies uh, many years ago. At that time, uh, in the early 90s, uh, the only accepted way to write uh, a case studies was uh, the one that we imported uh, from Harvard Business School. Uh, You generally wrote uh, a case study, then uh, you presented uh, it uh, to your class, uh, they read the case, uh, they try to analyze uh, uh, the story and to find the problem, and then they present uh, uh, the solution, hopefully, to the rest of the class. Um, Growing up uh, as a professor and uh, As a trainer, I started to develop uh, a different way of writing, uh, maybe uh, a more original way of presenting my contents. Uh, I started to travel all all around Italy and uh, uh, try to to find uh, very interesting uh, case studies, uh, uh, stories of uh, extraordinary uh, small business, uh, both from uh, a strategic point of view or an organization per- perspective. I generally uh, describe these uh, companies using uh, um, a very rigorous language because I'm still uh, a, a professor, I'm still from academia, but uh, uh, I try to use a very simple language. I'm uh, more like a journalist when uh, I write, for example, my my blog, I try to describe very briefly the company and to be uh, very simple in the language, but I'm not uh, a journalist at all, since uh, for every story uh, that I write, I try to underline some uh, 
a few pillar that uh, all my readers that are entrepreneurs or students uh, can learn. So there is uh, a lesson to learn in every post I, I write on my blog. And this point uh, is the original one because, uh, you know, uh, I'm not doing storytelling at all. Uh, I'm still a professor and I try to uh, teach best practices that can be used from entrepreneurs even when do when they do not belong to the same industries that I'm describing. And I think that the more business uh, are improved, the stronger uh, is the country's economy. That's my mission. And also, uh, last but not least, uh, with my narration, I tend to support uh, Italian entrepreneurs uh, to give them motivation. I try to give value to their action. I try to support uh, the original model of making business in Italy, the model that I described at the beginning of this interview. This is my mission and also my vocation, try to support Italian small business. And with this interview, try also to um, divulge uh, this knowledge in other countries. Absolutely. I, I totally understand it. It's actually the work of Italian innovators where uh, the ability to combine lightness of exposition, easy exposition with substance uh, is really an art. And I absolutely share the vision of uh, telling Italian industrialism through a case by case story, not only because of like an entrepreneurial um, or managerial form of consulting in a way uh, through the blog, but also from my perspective, the idea of locating these industrial stories within a cultural history. Uh, so to see how these stories are not like random dots, but they are part of a constellation of stories, uh, which is what Italian uh, industrialism really is about. It's, it's a network, a patchwork of stories that are not necessarily following a master plan or uh, like the development of English, French, American or German industrialism. Italian industrialism develops around these stories. Um, so in this sense, the ability to reconstruct them is not merely a form of storytelling, but it's a way to connect these dots to a larger network, really constellation rather than a system. And this is, again, one of the peculiarities of the Italian system of mid to small size companies that are really a fascinating reality that you don't find anywhere else uh, in the world. Thank you very much for this conversation. We examined the, the nature of the Italian network of skills as really this constellation of small quality stories, uh, a cloud of interrelated competencies and, and really as a complex laboratory of organic innovation. Uh, we also define the characters of the Italian impresa, uh, which is uh, the Italian term I like, uh, which has a dual uh, meaning as both enterprise and an adventurous feat, uh, like an epic feat. Uh, we discuss the necessary collaboration, the interaction that uh, academia needs to have with, with the industry and the ability to speak different languages, a way to connect words that don't necessarily look after, after each other. And um, this is really key in, in promoting transgenerational models of development because academia is a transgenerational system where a set of skills and competencies is transferred from one generation to another as in the model that you described of the Italian company. And this is also the, the soil for innovative solutions. Thank you very much really for being with us today. It was a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Luca, for having me. It was a real pleasure chatting with you. And uh, I hope the best for Italian innovators and for you. 
Thanks, everybody, uh, for uh, listening. And uh, thank you, Marina, for, for being with us uh, today. If you like this episode, I invite you to subscribe to the channel or to the newsletter at the webpage www.italianinnovators.com to receive notifications of new episodes and know more about the project. I also invite you to uh, follow Il Meglio del Piccolo, Uh, if you read Italian and uh, you can follow also me on my uh, LinkedIn profile or uh, on the Instagram account at Italian Innovators for updates, news and additional materials. Thanks again for your support. Arrivederci e alla prossima.